You only get one first impression, and that goes extra for movies. How we meet a character can define how we feel about them through the entire film. So, we're breaking down all the different ways characters show up with our picks for the 10 best character introductions of all time. At its best, the character introduction is a reveal, a sequence with its own setup, its own suspense, building its own anticipation towards the moment we meet our hero. And one of the most classic examples of this kind of reveal is what we like to call the introduction by parts. We see their hands, their feet, their clothes, their morning routine, everything but their face. It's a small montage striptease of details towards the money shot that is our hero's mug, all the while giving us a front seat tour of all the important details that make our character who they are. Think Oscar Schindler and Jesus from the Big Lebowski, Pat, Patrick Bateman, and even sort of the strangers on a train. However, for our first pick, we've got to go with the one and only Indy from Raiders of the Lost Ark. This sequence is pure genius. Not only do we see his hands, his feet, his hat, and his whip all before we're given the privilege, nay, the pleasure of Harrison Ford's grisly visage, we also watch these small parts of him tell us the story. All we see are the little details, but they tell the whole tale, building up the suspense for our mystery hero before his reveal. Of course, it's not always about the immediate tease. Sometimes characters spring fully formed into the narrative in abrupt and surprising ways that grab us by the collar and growl at us like a bad Christian Bale Batman impression. Think Quint from Jaws, or Ruby Rod from The Fifth Element, the Joker from The Dark Knight, Dr. Strangelove from, well, Dr. Strangelove, and our number nine pick, John Doe from Seven. You knew I'd say yes. Hey, we're here. Wonderful. Your wife called before. Get yourself an answer machine. Detective. After this, I'm Detective. gone. Detective. No big surprise. Detective! If you haven't seen Seven by now, you might want to go ahead and skip forward about 45 seconds because otherwise we're about to mess up your day. You're looking for me. Seven is 95 minutes into its 120 minute runtime with Detectives Pitt and Freeman not much closer to their serial killer than when they started when he just shows up in the police station, covered in blood. And it's Kevin fucking Spacey. You go to the movies, the poster says Brad Pitt, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Kevin Spacey. And 95 minutes in, you haven't seen Kevin Spacey. Who do you think's gonna be Kevin Spacey? Doesn't take a detective. But Kevin Spacey basically gave the studio an ultimatum. Told them he'd only do it if they didn't give him top billing. And then went completely ninja on the press. He shows up 80% of the way through and we never see him coming. And God damn, does it work. Next up at number eight, sometimes a character is introduced with a singular moment. A singular image that so perfectly exemplifies their essence that in that instant, you know them down to their very soul. This is Jack Sparrow, a proud pirate atop a sinking mast, or Renton, grinning like a madman while slapping the hood of the car that almost flattened him, or Rick Blaine, sitting between a cigarette, a drink, a checkbook, and a chess set. It's Bronson, telling the camera he always wanted to be famous, Holly eating her titular breakfast, Luke grinning at his beheaded meters, Alex sipping his Moloko Plus, and the dude sampling some half Half. All of these films manage to take a thousand words about their characters and distill them into a picture. But we think none better than the good, the bad, and the ugly did with Tuco. Let's count all the things we learn about the rat in all of about two seconds. He's a glutton, a drunkard, a wanted man, armed, creative, and a massive buffoon. Combine an almost too hilarious bevy of hand props with a, let's say, creative method of entry, and button it up with the iconic good, bad, and ugly freeze frame music combo, and you've got the makings of a legend. 
Other characters are introduced not with an image, but with an action. It's like the almost now cliched advice to write a strong character by showing your hero save the cat. You prove to your audience that he's kind, capable, active, and heroic all at once, and they fall in love. Of course, Frank from Once Upon a Time in the West does just about the opposite of this, but he's still an honorable mention on our list. The same with Harmonica, the same with Angel Eyes, the same with The Man with No Name. It turns out Sergio Leone's pretty damn good at these types of intros. Marion Ravenwood's drinking contest victory is another great example of this, as is Daniel Plainview's oil prospecting vignette. However, for our number seven, we're going with Kambe, humbly cutting off his top knot in order to pose as a peasant to rescue a young boy from Seven Samurai. Although we haven't seen every movie in existence, we're with Roger Ebert in thinking that this might just be the original example of the now pervasive tradition of the action hero starting off the story with an unrelated act of heroism, perhaps even the first saving of the cat. It's also probably where Leone got the idea for all the iconic character introductions that color the beginnings of his spaghetti westerns, seeing as how he drew so much on Kurosawa for inspiration in just about every other way. Kambe's is a brief foray that speaks to both his capabilities and his moral character. It combines cunning, compassion, sacrifice, and violence to quickly teach us about and make us like it, and it works perfectly. Kambe is a badass for the ages, and it takes us all of two minutes to know it. Our next two slots go to those iconic star moments where a character bounds into the story with a wink and a grin and all the charm and charisma in the world and we see how goddamn awesome they are. The kind of unforgettable entrance that's quintessentially classic Hollywood. And we're splitting this category up into two slots because we're dividing it down gender lines so we can see how kind of fucked up the difference is. See if you can spot the pattern. Male stars are introduced like this. On it! while female stars are introduced like this. Gilda, are you decent? Me? Men are objects of admiration and capability. The audience is meant to want to be them, while women are objects of, well, being objects. The audience is meant to want to possess them. Men hold weapons, tools, guns, while women wear towels. And we think the clearest example of these kinds of introductions belong to James Bond in Dr. No and Lisa Fremont in Rear Window. Gout. Neuf à la banque. I need Carte. another thousand. I admire your courage, Miss... Uh... Trench. Sylvia Trench. I admire your luck, Mr... Bond. James Bond. This is a classic instance where spectatorship theory comes in handy to see the gender differences. Notice how Bond does the looking while we look Lisa in the eye. Bond is shown in over the shoulders while Lisa is shown in direct POVs. James Bond is effortlessly cool while Lisa has us falling in love. Now, we're not condemning the use of men as objects of cool or the use of women as objects of romance. It happens in the world all the time. Both of these are natural, normal things. They're just not the only natural, normal thing. The problem is that in movies, women are almost exclusively objects of romance while men get to occupy lots of varied roles. But even they are often pigeonholed into the uber-masculine, uber-suave action fantasy archetype. In fact, almost every woman with a notable character introduction is in this category on our list, which should speak significantly to the role of women in classic cinema. At number four, sometimes a character introduction comes with a serious sense of doom. These are usually reserved for the big bad in a big reveal that immediately says shit's about to go down. Think Sexy Beast's Don Logan, A New Hope's Darth Vader, and Tim Burton's Joker. However, come on, who does this better than Fritz Lang with his murderer in M?
hast aber einen schönen Ball. Wie heißt du denn? Elsie Beckmann. He shows up as a shadow over a wanted poster for himself. We don't even see him, but he's introduced in the vilest, evilest, scariest way possible. The bouncing ball, the dialogue, the lean, the cut to her mother. Ugh, what a villain. What an entrance, what an introduction. Next up at number three, we're looking at the arrival that is itself tension filled, where the character's very approach to the screen fills us with apprehension. It's not a scary reveal as much as it's a long, slow entrance that gets worse and worse the closer we get. Think Henry V, Silva from Skyfall, and the original Dracula. They're all larger than life characters starting small in the frame and then walking towards us filling it with their stature. Of course, no one's ever done the slow, axial approach better than David Lee, which is why we really have no choice but to give this spot to Sharif Ali from Lawrence of Arabia. Rendering the wide expanse of the desert as claustrophobic as a coffin, Lean's iconic cinematography has him emerging as if from a mirage, shimmering in the heat of the distance and creeping closer for what seems like ages. And then, when it feels like it can't get any more unbearable, his Bedouin guide lunges for his gun and is brought down in a single shot. And then, more quiet, Ali slows, dismounts, and only then speaks. He is dead. Yes. Why? This is my well. Is he a bad man? A good man? A righteous man? An enemy? That we don't know. But we do know you probably shouldn't f with his well. Closing in at number two, we have the long-awaited reveal. The character whose reputation precedes him, who has been talked about and rumored and pursued and sought after, who is by now more myth and legend in our mind than a face, a symbol of something rather than the thing in itself. This is Bill from Kill Bill, Oberhauser from Spectre, Superman and Colonel Kurtz, and definitely Hannibal Lecter. However, if you know us, you already know who we're gonna pick. Harry Lime from The Third Man. What kind of a spy do you think you are, Satchel Foot? What are you tailing me for? Cat got your tongue? Come on out. Come out, come out, whoever you are. Step out in the light and let's have a look at you. Who's your boss? You're too dead, no one. What's it in the loose? Sounds was fault in you, Rob Dine. Sounds it deppert. Yeah, see, mine, ich schaue nicht so blöd. Eine Frechheit ist das nicht nieder, noch zu einem Krawall zu machen. If you were to accuse our list maker of having a hard-on for Harry Lime, you wouldn't be far off base. With so much time dedicated to rumors of his notoriety, how could the actual man possibly live up? But that is the magic of cinema. Sometimes the man on the screen can be larger than life, and I don't think it happens anywhere else better than here. First of all, it's Orson Welles at his most mischievous. And that face, maybe it's our rose-tinted nostalgia glasses talking here, but for our money, we've never seen a face that gives us more boundless unending glee. Combine it with the lighting cue, the music, the camera move, and the classic third man cant, and somehow Orson Welles makes the rumors look small. And finally, at number one, we're looking at the introduction that comes with a reversal of expectations. Maybe we heard one thing or anticipated something else, but the person we meet surprises us all together. Often played for comedic effect, this is Inspector Clouseau from Pink Panther, or Mozart from Amadeus, or Bella Lugosi from Ed Wood. But today, our number one goes to no other than Willy Wonka.
there is perhaps no better time to reminisce about our hellos as when we say goodbye. So here's to Mr. Wilder and all the entrances he ever made. Thanks for the laughs, Gene. So what do you think? Do you disagree with some of our picks? Did we leave out any of your favorite introductions? Let us know in the comments below. Come check out our bi-weekly movie list talkback on Facebook Live, Thursdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, after every episode where we answer your questions and respond to your comments. And be sure to subscribe for more Cinefix movie lists.